Hello, this is how to debug your Revit plugin for design automation locally and my name is Augusto Gonçalves, I'm part of the Forge uh, team here at Autodesk. To debug your plugins locally, you need a tool available on the Design Automation C Sharp Revit Local Debug Tool GitHub repo. Also, for this sample, we're going to use the sample that is available as part of the Forge uh, tutorial under Learn for Design Automation Sample. Design Automation runs on a sandbox environment. When the work item starts, we have a working folder where all the files are placed during the processing of that work item. On this Learn for Design Automation sample, we have uh, specified that we have one input file, one input data in the form of a JSON file, and we also have uh, one output file. Your activity may have different input files different output files and even have uh, files to work during the processing which will be stored on the working folder. But for this demonstration let's use this scenario. So to debug your plugins locally you need uh, a few things. Uh, first you need a design automation uh, debugger tool that is available on the GitHub repo. So let's download this zip file. Also as we're going to debug something we need a plugin to debug. So let's uh, download this sample to debug it. This sample is ready for design automation, so, so it should demonstrate how it works. All right, let's go to the folder where we downloaded the two files. Let me extract the uh, debugger tool. And let me also extract the sample we are trying to debug. Okay, so let's start with the design automation tool, debugger tool. Let me copy and go to Visual Studio. The essence of the design automation is that there is a design automation bridge that will be called to when the uh, application runs, and there is a design automation ready event that will be triggered when the application is ready to run. This tool contains two projects, 2018 and 2019 and you have to choose the version of the Revit that you are trying to debug. In this case, just to simplify, let me unload the 2018 because I'm using 2019 to avoid confusion. And this application is it's using a package that is available on Nougat. The package is Autodesk Forge and Automation Revit. So if I rebuild this application, it should restore the package from Nougat and build the application. I can also see that a few files are being copied from the sample uh, folder to this tool folder to the Revit uh, add-ins folder. So if I go to my uh, app data folder under app data ROM in Autodesk Revit add-ins 2019, I can see the add-in, the Zen Automation Bridge DLL, and uh, the sorry, Zen Automation Bridge DLL right here, and the handle right here. So now this plugin will load when Revit starts. So this is, the, this is the debugger that we need to use here. Okay, so this, this part is ready. Uh, I just need to run this uh, once. Now let me go back here and get my sample. And that's my sample. Let me get the path and go to Visual Studio and open my application that I want to debug. Uh, this sample contains uh, several projects uh, for web and for other engines. But as I just want to run Revit, I don't care about the other ones. So let me just, again, let me just unload them because it's not uh, useful for what I'm trying to do right here. Right? So on your case, you are most likely just having this application, an application like this. So this plugin was designed to uh, compile and run on a web environment. Uh, so that's why, and if you go to the Learn Forge tutorial, it explains that uh, this, com this post build command line is creating this, the bundle to be uploaded to design automation. Right? So that's what we need to run it live uh, on the web. But to debug it locally, you have to also copy those files to the, design, to the Revit add-ins folder. So something like this uh, will do the trick Right, so let me copy this and add here. So let me add these couple lines here 
where I'm copying the uh, DLL files from this plugin and the adding file to that specific folder. I just have to do one change to say update rvt param dot bundle contents slash adding to that folder and let me rebuild. So let me go back to that folder on Revit and um, Autodesk Revit Add-ins 19 and I can see now that my DLL, uh, the two DLLs that I need for my application and the add-in are also here. We can create a subfolder uh, and place the bundle right here as well, but this is just a debugging so uh, this is what we need, right? Now there's one more thing. Now uh, we need to prepare this, this plugin for debug. As any plugin that we are going to debug, we have to specify the start program, like as uh, Revit. So let me go to C, select my Autodesk Revit EXE. So that's where, that's where we start Revit. But remember that on Design Automation, we have a working folder in the, in the sandbox environment. So let me come back here and select the same folder we're using this one. So this will be my sandbox and I can create a new folder just to be complete sandbox folder and let me select this one. So now I'm telling Revit to use this as the working folder, right? Okay, so uh, already on this, uh, everything is ready on this part right now. And as I said, my, my plugin uh, requires uh, one input file, one output file and, and one input JSON file and one uh, it will produce one output right so I have to specify the input file so on this sample I have a few uh, sample files and that's the sample file for that specific specific plugin so now I'm telling Revit to start with this file because that's the input file that I need for my, my application and uh, as my plugin is using I also need to create on my sandbox the input JSON uh, uh, file. So if I go to the code of that plugin, I will see I will see that it uses uh, params.json file. So params.json file, and here you can specify how your JSON will be created. So let's say I want to edit this like that because that will be my uh, input for this specific plugin, right? So let me save this. So if I close now, I can see that on my sandbox I have my params.json. The input file doesn't need doesn't need to be here because it's I'm passing that as a command line argument for Revit, and uh, the output will be produced after that. Now everything is ready. I can go to my code that is ready for design automation, and I can put a breakpoint right here and start debugging it. As my, my plugins are not uh, uh, signed and are placed inside the app data folder, I can see this message uh, and there are a few articles on uh, Jeremy's blog, the build encoder, on how to avoid this by placing under program files or somewhere else or signing your application. But this is my DLL for my plugin loading and this is also the design automation handler or the debug tool loading as well. As I specified the input file as the startup file, that file will open on Revit. So that's the file opening on Revit. I can now go to add-ins, external tools and design automation handler that will trigger the design automation ready event and that will run my code. Remember that my plugin is expecting a params.json file to be created on the working folder and that should open right here. I have uh, my file, my, my data as on the JSON that will run the entire code. I will not debug this here. I'll just go to the last line and run it. Uh, and this is the last line where I save the output file on my code. And if I go to my sandbox environment, I can see that the output file was created. Uh, the, the design automation uh, handler 
We will also show a few messages that you may uh, choose to ignore, but this is just telling that something that the application ran as expected. And finally, as expected, the uh, work item will get the output file and sent to the uh, specified location uh, on specified on the work item parameters. That's it. Thank you for watching.